Generating traffic and sales can be a challenge for online merchants. But selling on the Walmart marketplace puts your products in front of millions of customers who shop on walmart.com. And right now, sellers who join Walmart Marketplace can save up to 50% on referral and fulfillment fees for the first 90 days. So get started today. Head over to marketplace.walmart.com slash savings. That's marketplace.walmart.com slash savings. Welcome to e-commerce conversations, a weekly podcast focusing on e-commerce topics featuring interviews with prominent people in the e-commerce space. For Practical E-Commerce, I'm contributing editor Kevin Patrick Allen. PCI, payment card industry, compliance, is a complex issue, and it's one that's difficult for e-commerce merchants to understand. It's also a complex issue for vendors, but it can't be ignored. Massimo Aragoni is the co-owner of Early Impact Incorporated, developer of the licensed shopping cart named Product Cart. He's also studied the PCI compliance issue thoroughly and joins us today to offer a vendor perspective on becoming PCI compliant. It's a perspective that we think will help you if you're an e-commerce merchant as well. Well, Massimo, uh, first of all, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. PCI compliance is an important uh, issue, and yet it's a very confusing one for merchants. We wanted to talk with you about that because uh, the merchant understands that a breach of their customer's information could lead to, lead to fines, it could lead to lawsuits, and, and certainly a loss of trust, yet it's not always clear what they need to do to become PCI compliant. Is PCI compliance equally confusing for a developer and for a vendor? Uh, sure. Yeah, it, it is. It's a very confusing uh, uh, topic, and there are reasons uh, why it is confusing. First of all, I guess to answer a couple of basic questions is, should should everyone be PCI compliant? Yes. Uh, and when is the deadline? The deadline actually has already passed. The, the confusion comes a lot from, uh, will anyone ask me if I am PCI compliant or not? And the answer to that is if you are a small business and you are typically uh, transacting less than 20,000 transactions for Visa or MasterCard or 50,000 for American Express, you're, uh, you're considered a small merchant according to the payment companies. And um, typically no one will ask you if you are PCI compliant or not. And uh, you, what, you, what you have to do is a lot less uh, – uh, in terms of uh, requirements compared to larger merchants. Uh, this doesn't mean that you should not be PCI compliant. Uh, you, you should, and, and the reason is that we just owe it to people that come and, and shop on uh, our e-commerce stores to be as secure as, uh, as possible, and the PCI compliance uh, standards uh, help us uh, uh, make sure that we are as, as secure as we can. Uh, so, I guess to answer your question under a, a vendor point of view, as vendors, we need to make sure that the software that we code uh, meets the requirements. So, the PCI compliance, uh, sorry, the PCI Security Standard Council came up with a program called PADSS, um, which uh, allows a vendor to make sure that their payment application is uh, compliant with the, requir- with the requirements. And by payment application, they mean any application that uh, is used to transfer uh, sensitive data, payment data. So a shopping cart is considered a payment application. With a license cart, that's uh, also confusing because since you don't host the merchant site, it would seem to be difficult to control the safety of their information anyway. Uh, can you explain that part of it? Yeah, sure. So uh, when you ask yourself, am I PCI compliant? Uh, uh, the way to answer that is through the questionnaires that the Security Council has made available. And uh, there's about, I, I believe, 12 sections in the questionnaire. And so, for example, one of those sections asks you questions about the payment application that you're using. So if you are using a licensed card, the only way you can really answer those questions that pertain to the payment application is uh, 
um, if the payment application, the shopping cart, has passed, has gone through the PADSS program, and has been validated. So the council has said, yes, we looked at this application through one of the vendors that performed those security tests, and the application meets our requirements. So as a merchant, when you go through the questions, the, the, the self-assessment questionnaire, to figure out if you are compliant, that will allow you to say yes to a whole bunch of questions that otherwise you cannot um, answer, really. And so to answer your question, yeah, if you are using a license application, the fact that the application is PADSS validated, so it has the stamp of approval of the council, simply addresses one of the many areas that uh, you need to look into, which is, is, again, specifically the questions that pertain to the payment application. Then there's a whole lot of other things. For example, your web hosting company, the, the payment gateway that you're using, the procedures that you're using in your own business to handle the payment data. Now, you mentioned the uh, PADSS uh, list, those companies that are certified within that area. If you go to the PCI Securities Council's website, they have this all listed. It's more or less uh, a seal of approval for the shopping carts uh, that are, in fact, certified. We went to that site, and, you know, there are more than 300 shopping carts out there. There are very few uh, comparatively speaking, that are listed, that are certified, which led us to ask the question, is this list uh, really not exhaustive, or is it just true that most of the shopping carts are not, in fact, validated, are not certified? What is the answer to that question? Uh, well, the main answer is uh, I don't know. Uh, but what I do know uh, are a couple of things. First, uh, it is a time-consuming process. So, for example, in our case, to go through the PADSS program took a few months. Uh, so some of the e-commerce applications out there might be going through the process as we speak. They might be uh, getting through the validation process, and they might be listed in the next couple of months. So that's one possibility. Uh, the second possibility is that the vendor... Um, decided that they don't want to do it. They don't consider that this as important um, as uh, it actually is. And so then those vendors should act on it. Um, since the process uh, is no longer time-consuming, but financially it requires uh, a commitment, uh, according to our research, it's typically between ten and $20,000. Some vendors probably didn't do it maybe because they, they didn't want to invest uh, in, uh, into, uh, into the program. No. And then the third, uh, sorry, I was going to say this third scenario is that maybe they tried to become uh, validated and they failed because the application wasn't coded correctly. What happens if you don't get certified? If you don't get certified, going back to what we were saying before, you're basically you're not allowing the, your merchants who should, should take the self-assessment questionnaire um, to answer the questions that pertain to the payment application, because they, they have no means. Uh, a, small, uh, a small business doesn't have the IT department on staff to go through the application and look at the source code and verify whether or not the source code is compliant with the, uh, with the requirement of Security Council. So if, you're not, if you don't have that stamp of approval, really, they cannot finish the self-assessment questionnaire. When you became PCI compliant, and as you say, it, it costs a lot of money, ten to twenty thousand dollars to to become compliant. You have to go through a lot of testing, and then you have to pay a one thousand dollar fee a year to be on that list. Uh, going through all of that, did you, as 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 a businessman, find it financially beneficial directly to become compliant? Or was it more a situation of, well, it's the right thing to do. I, I have to do this. I should do this. And, and I guess what I'm really asking is, uh, does, does it improve your business substantially to have that certification beyond the fact that you should have it? It's hard to answer that question. I would say that the, really the, the reason uh, to, to do it, 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 it's because it is the right thing to do. In terms of marketing, it may or may not pay off. 
Uh, and I say that because, again, there's so much confusion out there when, when it comes to small businesses and PCI compliance uh, that it's hard to say whether merchants that are looking for an application really use this as a way to decide uh, what they should do. And, and, and that's also because, as we said, the fact that the premium application is uh, uh, approved, uh, PA, DSS, uh, validated, is only one element of, uh, of the PCI compliance uh, uh, spectrum. And so, the, so basically merchants look at it and, and they say, well, even if I get an application that is approved, I'm not PCI compliance yet. And, and that's the truth. Um, so they... So then they're, you know, further confused uh, about the whole process. But uh, the way um, we as vendors uh, should go about it is to really stress the fact that this is uh, something that, that they should uh, they should do because they should acquire, uh, they should buy, because otherwise uh, they have no means to become PCI compliant once they once they decide that they are going to go through the process of answering all the questions of the self-assessment questionnaire and uh, et cetera. So I, I guess that just uh, to make the, the, the long story short, over time I believe that marketing-wise this will pay off because people will understand what it means and more, of, more and more of us as vendors will try to uh, I guess let people understand what it what what this program means and why it is important. Massimo, as you know, most of our uh, listeners and readers are small e-commerce merchants. Anything else that you would like to share with them regarding PCI compliance? Uh, sure. Well, one thing is, why should you be PCI compliant? So the, there are a couple of uh, big reasons. One is. Theoretically, the, the acquirer, the acquiring bank, which is the, the entity that should come, knock on your door, and ask you for your PCI compliance status. So Wells Fargo, Bank of America, you name it. The bank, basically, in most cases, that you got your merchant account with. They could, uh, at any time, ask you for, for your compliance status. And theoretically, you might not be allowed to, to accept credit cards if you can't prove that you are compliant. Um, and then the second main reason is if there is a security breach uh, for any reason and uh, you are sued, like you said at the beginning of this conversation, and, and there are damages, uh, your status of PCI-compliant uh, business uh, would basically limit your liability uh, for those damages. Well, it's uh, it's definitely a complicated issue, but it, it sounds like bottom line that we can eliminate some of the complexities of it by ensuring that the shopping cart that we use is, is PCI compliant. So at least that component of it becomes, uh, 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 you know, clear if, if we handle it in that way. That's correct. And if you add to that that most professional web hosting companies provide a, a PCI compliant environment, and then most, uh, uh, the vast majority of payment gateways, of course, are, are, are PCI compliant. Or they probably all are. Uh, so then you start adding uh, various uh, elements of your e-commerce business, uh, one on top of the other, and uh, now you have a pretty, a pretty good picture. All of the elements of my business uh, uh, pass the, the test that they needed to pass. So then the last few remaining things are, are procedures internal in your organization, and the, the self-assessment questionnaire goes through that. You know, what do you do, for example, with uh, receipts uh, where the, the credit card number was printed? Uh, you know, are you shredding them right after the, the credit card transaction was processed in case uh, you are uh, processing transaction offline using a terminal? Type of, for example, that's a scenario that could happen. So... When all of these elements uh, um, are compliant, you have, you're much closer to, to reaching your PCI compliance status. Massimo, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. That's all the time we have for this week's e-commerce conversation. I hope you enjoyed it. Please tune in next week for another new episode.